what does it take to actually win in the private label world nowadays? Yeah, I, I love how you add it nowadays because it has changed so freaking much. I think it's changed more in the last year than it's changed in the preceding 14. Did I say that right? Like the 14 before that. Mm -hmm. Like it's changing that rapidly. A lot of it in the logistics world. I was just on a call with y Yanni Mazur from Gatita. And he brought up an acronym I never heard of called FACOS. Like we know tacos, like uh, yep. t total average cost of sale, but he's got FACOS, which is F FBA added cost of sale. Kind of like all those extra fees that come into there and sure. you know, the PPC, everything in there is like really forced people to look at private label differently. And, and I'll, I'm going to throw this out before I get on my soapbox because I'm super passionate about this topic is obviously whoever's listening to this, you can, and maybe even you, Todd, might disagree with me, but like, we could all approach private label differently and all be wildly successful and all be right. So I'm not sitting here saying like, like the only way you can be successful or a real private label seller is to do what I'm saying on the contrary. Yeah, for sure. A drum that I've really beat on for the last decade has to do with differentiation. And I, I guess tapping myself on the back lately with all this extra, you know, fees and everything else going on, it's looking more and more like I might have hit on a winner and mm -hmm. it not have just been some, you know, weird contrarian passion project of mine is, is differentiating now seems to be the key. It seems like the recipe for failing on Amazon right now is a me too product from China. 100%. And yeah. You just, you're just not going to have the margins. If I had to just jump out there and say, what is a sweet spot, everything else being equal on Amazon right now that you could do good. It would be like the hundred to $250 range. If you're getting into a me too product, you just have a lot more margin, but most mm -hmm. people are not going to be able to do that. So a me too product, some Alibaba ready to ship a uh, me too product on Amazon is kind of where your profits go to die. Mm -hmm. And it, it's sad because there's a lot of information out there, some new and some just outdated that is still still beating that drum. So when I'm talking about differentiation, I'm for the purposes of Amazon, I'm talking about a differentiation to your product that is very obvious in the main image. And I think this is important to clarify because it's going to tie in really well with um, the technological differentiator that, that I was speaking to you about. And, and feel free to cut me off on this because I will just go. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Go. For okay, sure. So a differentiator that is very obvious in the main image. That's not to say that you shouldn't try to improve, you know, the, the inner workings of your product. But the example I like to share is, let's say you have a coffee grinder. And I used to be, I used to have some brands in the coffee space. And there's this like higher level of coffee grinder that uses a ceramic burr to, to really grind your, your coffee. If you were to add extra ceramic burrs inside of your coffee grinder, yes, it would grind your coffee better, I assume. But you wouldn't be able to see those extra coffee grinders in the main image when you're scrolling. So yeah. for Amazon purposes, that's not going to have the same impact. Right. So that's I think that's pretty critical when we're talking about differentiating to succeed on Amazon. Nothing wrong with differentiating to add value to the world. But for Amazon, it needs to be if you want to reap the rewards, it needs to be different in the main image. 